This video is brought to you by the new Motorola Razr. Now, I dare say, 007, that you've met your match with this machine. Yeah, new model, improved specs. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're discussing the Motorola Razr, then versus now. Hi. My flight has been canceled. It's some absurd weather problem. This is the new Motorola Razr. In this video, we'll be looking at the Motorola Razr, both as we knew it in the mid-2000s and in its current smartphone iteration. Did you ever miss having a flip phone? Tell us about your favorite phone in the comments below. The tech marketplace is a fast-paced and crowded one. New products come and go, many without ever making much of an impression on consumers. Every now and then, however, a device comes along that feels emblematic of a period of time. And in this industry, a few years can feel like a lifetime. From late 2004 until the decline of flip phones around 2008, the Motorola Razr was the phone to own. Hi. Flash forward roughly a decade and a half from its initial release, and this fan-favorite device has gotten a new lease on life as a smartphone. The original Razr, released in 2004, quickly became the must-have phone of its time. It was a status symbol. It was cool. It felt like a perfect marriage of style and functionality. The V3 model alone managed to sell 130 million units, making it the best-selling clamshell design phone in history. And that's not even taking into account the Razr 2. With its sleek design, the Motorola Razr was initially heralded as a fashion phone, a conversation starter with a price tag to match. But the cost quickly came down, and it went from status symbol to the logical choice. You couldn't walk down the street without seeing a razor in the hand of a passerby. Characters in movies and television use them. My flight has been canceled. It's some absurd weather problem. I need to get home tonight. The twins have a recital tomorrow morning at school. What? At school! Absolutely. Oh. Let me see what I can do. Good. It was even one of the player tokens in the 2006 edition of Monopoly Here and Now. Ask anyone who owned a Razer back in the aughts, and they will likely tell you that it was their favorite phone, at least pre-smartphone technology. The most important thing for a phone to get right was style, and the Razer series had style to spare. Revealed in 2004, Motorola's V3 was the thinnest phone around. Built from aluminum with a nickel-plated keypad, this thing looked phenomenal. There's an enduring fondness for this device. During its lifespan, it didn't necessarily beat out the competition in terms of specs, but it was a testament to the fact that specs aren't everything. What it offered were competitive specs in a package that was both beautiful and undeniably functional. The Razer V3 will always stand as a testament to the power of really striking design. Razer, we salute you. When talking wistfully about the original Razer, it's easy to get caught up in the aesthetics. But it's important to remember that Motorola achieved that sleek profile through innovative design. At the time, this was the slimmest clamshell design on the market. The keypad addressed the increasing shift towards texting by offering buttons that felt huge for the time, but made typing a breeze compared to other T9 options. The original Razer might seem small in hindsight, but it was actually quite wide by then current industry standards. This was a necessary design choice to accommodate the tech. It also served to give the user a larger-than-average screen, a design choice that acknowledged the burgeoning interest in mobile gaming. The new Motorola Razr comes with its own fair share of innovations. The most obvious difference from older models is the foldable screen. This means a larger screen that takes up less space and cannot be easily scratched in a pocket or purse. Unlike many other foldable phones, which fold vertically, the new Razr stays true to its roots and folds horizontally, with that satisfying flip motion. It's intuitive and makes the phone especially compact. There's still an external screen too, which now has much more functionality. Of course, when it comes to flip phones, it's all in the hinge. One of the main concerns with foldable phones is their fragility. Motorola collaborated with Lenovo to design a hinge that's actually an elaborate system of different hinges working in conjunction with sliding plates. The result is a hinge that feels a bit more rigid than the original, but sturdy and a screen that's seamless when unfolded. While the flip still feels similar, in terms of specs, the old and new razors are worlds apart. It's kind of mind-blowing to look back and think that the first razor in 2004 had 5.5 megabytes of internal memory and no card slot. Simpler times. 
By contrast, the model released in early 2020 features a Snapdragon 710G processor, 6 gigs of RAM, and 128 gigabytes of storage. In reaction to mixed reviews, the most recent model, the Motorola Razr 5G, improves on that, with a 765G processor, 8 gigs of RAM, and 256 gigabytes of storage. The battery capacity is 2800 milliamp hours. The original Razer came with a 1.3 megapixel camera, eventually getting up to 2 megapixels in subsequent models, some with a secondary camera. Naturally, the 2020 Razer ups this considerably with 16 megapixels, or 48 for the 5G model, and an aperture of f1.7. It can also shoot 4K video. The front camera of the newest model has 20 megapixels, which, thanks to the clamshell design, has the potential to revolutionize your selfie game. The most defining difference in Motorola's new Razer is without a doubt the folding technology. Hard though it might be to believe, the Razer V3's 2.2-inch, 176 by 220 pixel display felt luxurious back in 2004. The modern Razer, by comparison, has an 876 by 2142 pixel, 6.2-inch flexible OLED display. Compared to conventional smartphones, these aren't groundbreaking specs. But relative to the folding competition, it's pretty impressive. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. As for the front-facing screen, at 600 by 800 pixels, the 2.7-inch QuickView display is a massive upgrade from flip phones of yesteryear. But it's what the QuickView display represents that makes it stand out. In addition to checking the time, users can control music and check notifications without opening their phone. And there are additional applications on the horizon. The early days of the smartphone era were exciting. Companies were pushing the boundaries to make the ultimate smartphone. Innovation was apparent in every new model. But it's no secret that over a decade later, the vast majority of smartphones have largely adopted a uniform design. The other aspect of it is being driven by the technology that's available. If you can only make batteries of a certain form factor, that's going to drive how big the phone can be and the shape of the phone. If you can only make a screen of a certain form factor, it's exactly the same. And that's why we see phones that are flat. Picking a smartphone's gotten kind of boring, and that's a big part of the new Motorola Razr's appeal. It satisfies modern demands while proving that there's still room for innovation. And man, do we miss that flip. It's all the same thing. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.